I'm here. So the fender noise, man, it just works. The other thing too about the squire is that they're so modifiable. I mean, like, yeah. The wood is fine, you know. Yeah. The wood is fine. So this is blend. This is mid. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this uh, treble and bass. I believe so. Sometimes they stack them where you're like the, the mid and the bass are on one knot and the treble's its own knot. Okay, so let's. Is that mid frequency? Pickups, they sound like they would do great in metal context too. Possibly, like yeah. That that, that, like, uh, that high, that high mid, it's coming through. It's nice and growly, but like you pull that pull that brightness down, it's really not even bad when it spanks at you, you know. Yeah. Um. I want to know what the hell these are. Yeah. Because I assume mid, high, low. You'd think, right? Right. But whenever I there's no middle detent I, for the top one. That's so it's 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 yeah. different, and it's then strange. there's no middle detent for this one, so you just kind of just yeah. So I would like hunt for the middle of the knob, maybe, and then like play the same thing over and over. Like that's pretty much down. yeah. It's kind of like it's the only way I, I know this is it. this is middle. This is between both pickups. That's the blood pot, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is all the way up. Okay. I would think that's middle. Treble or mid. Let's see. So try the tiny knob now. Let's take this all the way up. Is this mid? Might be a mid. So I think a uh, big knob is treble. Okay, so and then maybe that everything all the way out. Maybe that sleeve is your bass. Trouble? Trouble. I think that's trouble now. Okay. I think that's trouble now. I think that's mid now. This isn't really doing anything. I think this is mid frequency. Yeah, you're probably right. And then this is bass. This is trouble. What the hell? Now I'm confused. <laughs> may I? May I? Yeah, I have, I have, let me see. Let me see. Let me see if we can decipher. What are you looking for? 
a single or a double? Okay, say so everything down. Yeah, oh. You That's knob. Good. Right. I wish you were actually. I wish you had a D10, yeah. like a center to get you mine. Anything, know. yeah. So everything down, let's see. I don't hear nothing. Say treble up, and maybe this is frequency. So let's see. If I haven't sweet. found. I haven't ran across a bass. Also, flip it over real quick. So that this I is think the active is... preamp, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I don't know if it'll function. What does it say? If there's a don't switch say there. anything. Mm. A little strange. <laughs> So, some kind of a treble cut here on this knob. Maybe that's your mid knob. Bass treble master tone. Oh, I'm getting bass treble master tone out of this. Like, right? But oh, okay. Then we go treble down, even less, right? Okay. So treble all the way up, bass, bass all the way. Excuse me, treble up, bass down, tone down, right? Okay, turn tone all the way up. Turn all the way up. Now bass all the way up. Oh, that's interesting. That's what I'm getting out of it. Okay, the only way... So yeah, well, it's like bass. I think it's bass cut and boost, treble cut and boost, and master tone. Or maybe because there's no center detent for that back knob. Nope. So it could just be treble and bass cut. That's also possible. Yeah, and then like master tone. Yeah. Treble bass cut master tone, and then um, that's, that's totally feasible for like a nine volt system. Sometimes uh, the eighteen volts have your whole parametric EQ on board. I have a. Uh, I have an EMG JBX set, which is really simple. Yeah. It's just volume, volume, master tone, but it's also nine volts. Yeah. So that that tone knob just cuts harder than normal. That's all it does. Okay. And I can so see where that would be useful. I, I, I love that personally. That's my own. Do you know what's really is. stupid? Which one? Young Young Me will go for a sire. Dude, sire. Yeah, sire. Like the Young Me will go for sire. I just sire. want everything possible. But cheap. But if you can. If you can like for the money, regular me. Like, court, like, court's like, really nice for that too. <laughs> I've been Thirty-five and plus me <laughs> is just like that. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just that. That's cute. Yeah. That looks the part. It does the thing. Like I, so far. I don't blame you. Which is really trippy. So far, this one oh, and really? that one the have been the favorite bases that I've played thus far. I want to get my hands on the Schecter, uh -huh. but it's behind bars right now. I don't mind pulling that there. And I also want to get my hands on this Ultra. American Ultra, good, good choice. If, Actually, if I of, can. out of all of them, that's the only one with a real bridge. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, it's the only one with a real bridge. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, so right now I'm doing the recording thing. Yes, sir. And it's, for me, 
so I don't own 50, 60 bases. I have to go places where the bases are so I can get an idea of it. And then later, I then talk about it. That's been a nice little surprise, this Mustang. Yeah. That's been, a, and I had, because the Bronco pickups mm -hmm. in it, I had my own thoughts about it because I played a Bronco bass and mm -hmm. I was like, it's not that. <laughs> I wouldn't spend $200 on just that yeah. if it's not going to give me that, but in a smaller package. So yeah. that actually is really nice and I enjoy playing that one. But so far, this Warwick right here, which I didn't give a thought to. Ever. Warwick's, man, they're weird. Um, they feel very baseball-y. Like, yeah. Behind behind the fretboard, but this. the fretboard feels great. Yeah, you know. That's yeah, all once you, for me. it's it's made for people with bigger mitts. That makes sense. Well, I also see I, feel like. I also see people playing Warwick's like way down here, like yeah. arm all the way down, strap way down, yeah. a lot of pick Freaking action. Freaking Robert Trulio type bass players. Yeah. yeah, all down here, or whenever they're they're honestly when people are playing thumb, it's always hanging way down too, like that flea style thumb. You know, like oh, the over the top joint. Yeah, kind of yeah. over, yeah, over. forearm thumb. Yeah. yeah, that's what I see whenever, at least those are the genres I see people reach for these for most of the time, you know? And but that surprised me because I never, it's very simple. I don't know if that's active. Is that active tone? Nope. It's just passive, so it's yeah. volume, volume, and then tone. Volume, volume, so tone. It, the, way, the way it's set up, mm -hmm. it sounds the part. And oh, I, could, yeah. I could do with that five string, yes. Four string, probably not. But five string, yes, I can do with that. Five string two music man is a very powerful machine, dude. Five, yeah, five pickup, or yeah, five string two music man. My, my uh, customer service man, your friend, he had one. He just recently ordered a six string bongo. Ooh. Yeah. Boy, I, I turned him on to it because I had a buddy of mine who was shopping for bases in Nashville. And he actually went all through Nashville looking for something and set him on the bongo after playing everything. He went to the low end. I don't know if you've ever heard of that shop. Uh -uh. Like, they don't have anything hanging on the wall less than like, like your mortgage payment, you know? Yeah. And like, it was like insane. I, uh, so I was like, the, you played everything there and you all that custom stuff and you landed, and he was on, just like, and you landed bongo. on a bongo. bongo. Yeah. And so I, I turned him on to it when he was shopping for a six string and so he went through everything, he cross compared, did all the specs and he bought it too. And Larry came and he strung it up and we were playing it for a little bit back there. Dude, it sounds incredible. It's like mm -hmm. it's like playing the low end of a piano. <laughs> it's so sick. So in that same vein, mm -hmm. there are two uh there are two bases that I have to bring up with the bongo, I have to say the Big L. I have a Big L5. Mm. Uh, LTD? No, this is Ernie Ball Music Man as well. Oh. So it's a three pickup uh, oh. Music Man. Good God. Yeah. I've never seen it. So, oh, I hold on. I think I'm behind it's it. It's over here. Yeah. Let me just, I'll just. Let me tell you something. It's rare that I actually get somebody that I can talk to ah. <laughs> that's into it just like I am. But this is great. So, when I, I saw that they, they made the production model and I was like, what? That's cool, man. Yeah, they actually came out with it uh, before the pandemic actually struck, the Paranormal. Oh, really? The... Squire, Paranormal 54. Okay. So okay. they did the volume, tone, volume, tone hmm. on the bass and it was a Squire one. So it was probably like, at the time it was four ninety nine whenever it came out. They're probably like six now. Probably, because, mm -hmm. you know. COVID monics. COVID. Yes, Covenomics. Co COVID made the wood. Covenomics. I like it. Oh, yeah. They, I like uh, it. it. They definitely made the wood very expensive. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> you remember, do you remember when all those memes are flying around? It's like, I want a 1973 Corvette. I have three pieces of plywood. Uh, don't don't lowball me. I know what I got. I know what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, people. <laughs> the truth hurts. You know? Okay, so That's let right. me ask you this. Uh, what is your... Dream guitar. Okay, so I went to Nam once, and I played a lot of really tasty stuff there. Okay. And uh, out of all of the stuff that I picked up, many things felt great. Okay. Many things even felt like oh, Excalibur. Right? Yes. Uh, but only one bass that I pick up that felt like you. mine for some was, reason, yeah. like an extension of my arms, and it was the MTD guys, Michael Tobias Designs. Okay. Uh, have you ever, talk to me. Have you ever heard of them? 
Yes. Um, Michael Tobias, I think, originally worked for Gibson, yeah. uh, and then he got either axed or he was making better guitars, and they were like, get out. I can't remember which. Um, uh, and he did Michael Tobias, I think, as an extension of Gibson for a while, and then, like, I think they bought him, and then he was like, ah, eventually went solo again. And they do custom builds mostly now. They do have like they have the the Kingston line, which mm -hmm. is actually uh, the uh, cheaper the Squire. Yeah, it's it's their the Squire of MCB. Pretty much their, yeah. their I want to say Indonesian line. Yeah. Uh, and their their American instruments. They're made out of New York. Uh, I the thing that's magical to them, uh, like f for me, is like what they do. The joinery between their finish and their wood is like witchcraft because you always get a finished base. For me, I I don't like ultimately the way a finished bass resonates. I am a nerd. Um, I have a yeah, filthy so Mexican J that has been sanded down. Oh, so you took the whole lacquer stuff yep, off of it? The lacquer on the top is gone. There's lacquer on the back, but the lacquer on the top is gone. That thing bucks like, oh, I love it. Okay. Like, real, like, the first so you're a mid range person. Yes, you're the J bass or three bass. J bass. Um, and my first big inspir like inspiratory tone that made me want to like just really play a whole lot was uh, Getty Lee. And yeah. that guy is very barky. Yeah. His whole his whole shtick is he basically plays way too hard. Like he yeah. just drives his pickups. Yeah, like, and yeah. was the same way. Yeah, yeah. just God, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And so like that tone is sick, and I really really loved it. So I, I kind of tried to chase that down. My my next big muse like I turned on to Victor Wooten, and I was like, wow, this guy's like, he's expanding my vocabulary so fast. Uh -huh. And I heard his, his, his whole spiel about the JBX pickups, listened to him, and I was like, I'll just order, because he has a PJ. And I was like, I can't get that tone, but I was like, I still like the clarity of the upper range. So I was, I'll order it and see how they sound. And I, it turns out they were like, just at the doctor ordered it, because we play them really hard to drive, three mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, this is perfect. You know, it's just like a J bass that spanks a little harder. Mm -hmm. So I have that. Um, it didn't come with a fretted neck. It came with a fretless neck, so I put a fretted neck on it. Hip shot tuners, it's got a detuner on it. And then I slapped a, the kick ass, the hip shot kick ass bridge yeah. on it. Uh, yeah. Copper tape on the inside. Yeah. And oh my God, that thing it plays like a dream. Okay. Like it's, so that's my, you know, that's my daily driver and I hope they put me in the ground with it. Okay. Um, but the, 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 so like for, for me, like I had spent so much time putting that thing together when I got to Nam and I picked up that, it was a Kingston Saratoga. I oh, was like, you know yeah. who plays that? Mm -hmm. Norm Stockton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't the Stockton signature. But yeah, it was, but it that's was, who plays the Saratoga. That's yeah. his signature. I picked up the Saratoga and I was okay. like, oh my God, it feels like they made my base for me. Yeah. Is, and, and, and and again, like that finish didn't slow like the harmonics of the bass down uh -huh. at all. Like yeah. it still felt snappy and alive. Yeah. You know, not like it uh, for the you know, for me, a lot of these, like I love them, but they get like candied over to death. Like they don't even resonate anymore. Yeah. You know, like you can kind of hear them, but it's all pickup. Yeah. I love when you can hear the instrument. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna give you. This is just me to you. For you to just listen, yeah. if you go on Instagram, check yeah, yeah, out yeah. some stuff. I would love to. Uh, I'm going to give you <laughs> Seric, S E R E K. Okay. Seric bases. They're very, uh, they're vintage looking. Ah, Derek, you bastard. <laughs> Close enough. But S if you, that's how you. Seric bases. Mm -hmm. They look interesting and they sound completely unique. Okay. That's one. I'm also going to give you. Close K L O S guitars. Close guitars. Their bass, the Apollo, the like the bass model. If you want a piano tone, if you want it to be clear with no coloring, no nothing, and it's basically set up just like this Warwick is. Close basses. Awesome. Just listen to them. I did a review on them. Yeah. If you want to check it out, if Sarek. you don't, cool. No, Seric and close. Seric so. That's what I feel like you're leaning towards whenever you don't yeah, want, yeah, like, so, uh, I, mean, I, 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 I like love, Aguilar, uh, I like Aguilar's mm -hmm. amplifiers, but they do a thing they to do your thing. bass tone. They absolutely do. That's so if I you want to do a modern slap situation, it's dark glass. Yeah. Aguilar. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want like raw, I'm not going to give you anything, but what you feed into me, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be. Uh, Ampeg, yes. Ampeg does a thing as well. See, it does uh, the same thing. 
can hear Rumble. it more in their in their tunes. Yes. Like, they, yes. Like there's a reason why that's the that the SVT is a standard. There's a reason why that's the thing. For because sure. that in the P bass, that's oh, what the hell the seventies sure. was. Absolutely. Right. So it does a thing that you can't stop from happening. But like as far as clarity, just to get your sound out rather than you just going like PA amplifier mm -hmm. to a speaker. Mm -hmm. I would go this one. I have yeah. a Rumble Stage 800 at the crib. And a good uh, choice on the 800. You just really, I mean, because I love their preamps. It's just they never give you enough power, honestly. When they came out with the 800, I was like, thank God. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm kind of a Fender sponsored player. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So a lot of the, the benches to America. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, the Vintage Two, the American Pro, the Meteora, I got them, and Fender sent them to me. Damn, dude, that's awesome. I know, right? <laughs> but like, they they all the the preamp that's on board on the bass has never been what's up. No, not really. Like it's never been what's up, and it's been the same one since the nineties. Mm -hmm. They haven't changed anything. There's no tone control in passive mode. Yeah. For any of them. For, for any of them. Nope. No, There's no. not. No, so you just get toned. That's <laughs> one. Yeah, you're like, at least you can still finish a gig, right? Yeah, thank God. Thank God you can still finish a gig. And, but you can. Now, I wonder, I, I know um, the only one that I can think of, I can't remember, is that Schecter or like another Schecter around here? There's one that actually has, uh, it's all passive, but it still has tone shaping on it. And I, I want to say like both pickups have a bass switch on it. Pretty sweet. This, guy. this check. It is all passive, 